lungworms, metastrongyla species. A. Characteristics 1. Lungworms are parasites of the respiratory and circulatory systems of mammals. 2. Earthworms serve as the intermediate host and are necessary for the complete development of the lungworm. b. Life cycle 1. Adult lungworms live and produce embryonate eggs in the lungs of the pig. 2. The pig coughs up, swallows, and passes the eggs in the feces. 3. The embryonate eggs are ingested by the earthworm where they goes through a series of larval stages. 4. The pig swallows infected earthworms, digestion frees the lungworm larvae, and the larvae penetrate the pig's intestinal wall. 5. The larvae travel through the lymphatic system, escape to the bloodstream, and proceed to lungs where they complete their life cycle. C. Symptoms 1. The signs of lungworm disease include severe coughing, difficult breathing, loss of appetite, and poor weight gain. 2. The pulmonary air passages may become dilated and firm grayish nodules appear near the swollen margins of the lungs. 3. Severely infected pigs may develop parasitic pneumonia and secondary bacterial pneumonia which can cause severe economic loss and be lethal. 4. Diagnosis of the disease is based upon the history and clinical symptoms, but most of all upon post-mortem examination. 5. Microscopic examination of the feces helps in diagnosing lungworm disease. 6. Swine seem to develop an immunity to lungworm as they get older. D. Transmission and control. 1. Total confinement, good management, sanitation, and proper nutrition will help prevent lungworm and other external parasitic diseases. 2. Try to eliminate contact between young pigs and earthworms. 3. Well-drained, clean pastures reduce the number of earthworms. 4. Provide a balanced ration and nose ring swine on pasture to prevent rooting. 3. Whipworms, Trichurisuis. A. Characteristics 1. Whipworm occurs in pigs worldwide. It also affects man, wild boars, and monkeys. 2. The colon is the main organ involved in whipworm infection. B. Symptoms 1. The clinical signs are slow weight gain, rough skin, and an unthrifty appearance. 2. Excess mucus production and nodular formations may occur in the colon. 3. Cell death, fluid infiltration, and hemorrhaging of the colon lining are noticed at necropsy. 4. Diagnosis involves finding parasite eggs in the swine feces or on post-mortem examination. C. Prevention and control, follow the standard sanitation methods that control other parasites and diseases. 4. Trichinosis, Trichinella spiralis. A. Cause. 1. Infected meat eaten by host. 1. Trichinosis is caused by the trichina worm. The disease is found in pigs, man, and in many other species including wild mammals. 2. The worm exists wherever swine are raised and its appearance is associated with the feeding of uncooked garbage to swine. Life cycle of Trichinella spiralis. 1. Infected meat eaten by host. 2. Meat fibers and cyst walls are digested which. 3. Release trichinae where in small intestine develop into. 4. Sexually mature adults which mate. 5. Female gives where they insist birth to young trichinae. 6. Young trichinae. 1000 to 1500, in mucosa of travel by way of intestinal emphatics to blood circulation to point 7. Muscles of host where they insist. B. Symptoms. 1. There are seldom any symptoms observed in swine. 2. Cysts appear in the skeletal muscles of the pig when trichina are present. 3. Cysts containing live larvae may remain intact for years in the muscle but calcification usually destroys the larva. C. Transmission and control. 1. 
to control trichinosis in pigs, thorough.lghly cook all garbage that is fed to them. 2. Practice strict rodent control and promptly remove all dead pig carcasses. 3. Trichina is passed to man and other animals when they ingest uncooked or improperly cooked pork products. 4. Trichina larvae are killed when pork products are cooked until the core temperature is raised to 1370 F. 5. Education concerning the importance of properly cooked pork products, prevents the spread of the disease to man. Other internal parasites. A. Liver flukes and tapeworms also infect swine but they are of minor importance in swine parasitology. B. In most cases the pig is not the normal host but rather an accidental host. Preventive measures of disease in pigs. A. Disinfectants. 1. Factors to consider when choosing disinfectants. A. Germicides for disinfecting a building should work well in the presence of organic matter, be compatible with soaps or detergents, harmless to building materials, and relatively non-toxic. B. Chemical properties. 1. High temperatures drive off the active ingredient from disinfectants containing chlorine or iodine. 2. Some disinfectants are affected by the pH balance and hardness of the water. Safety precautions. A. Many cleaners and disinfectants are poisonous. B. Store in tightly closed containers in a safe, locked area out of reach of children and other unauthorized persons, and away from feed and other supplies. C. Never mix bleach and ammonia, they form a highly toxic substance when combined. D. Keep the labels on all containers and observe safety precautions. Avoid skin contact and breathing of spray mists or fumigants. Wear goggles and gloves. 3. Disinfectant Procedures A. Laboratory testing for the effectiveness of disinfectants is complicated and can be misleading if disinfection is not done thoroughly. B. Veterinarians can provide a practical, simple, and inexpensive method. Management Practices 1. New animals added to the herd are a potential source of new diseases. Buy healthy animals and avoid mixing animals from multiple sources. 2. Test breeding swine for brucellosis, leptospirosis, and pseudorabies. Obtain a health certificate showing all tests and vaccinations at the time of purchase. 3. Make sure the swine are properly identified and delivered in a clean disinfected truck. 4. Isolate newly purchased swine for 30 to 60 days and keep them at least 300 feet from other swine. Retest for disease before adding them to the herd. 5. Never bring newly purchased sows or boars into a farrowing house or expose baby pigs to new animals. 6. Keep visitors out of hog lots and swine facilities. Keep rubber boots, disinfectants, and a change of clothing available for those who must enter the premises. C. Sanitation Practices L. Vacate the facilities A. This technique breaks the disease cycle especially when combined with thorough cleaning and disinfecting. B. Keep the facility empty for three weeks or longer for best results, but even a few days are helpful. C. Rotate pastures, feeding floors, and farrowing pens to reduce the number of parasite eggs and infectious agents. 2. Cleaning and disinfecting. A. Good sanitation controls the spread of disease-causing microorganisms. B. Sometimes it provides the only successful solution to breaking the disease cycle. C. Use a disinfectant appropriate for your facility. 3. Foot baths. A. This practice helps prevent the spread of diseases between production units or farms when visitors must enter the premises. B. Cresols, synthetic phenols, aldehydes, and chlorhexidine are satisfactory disinfectants for use in footbaths. C. Keep the disinfectant solution fresh, replace it frequently or whenever organic material accumulates. 4. Farrowing Area Sanitation 
Wash sows with warm water and soap or mild germicidal solutions before placing them in farrowing stalls. b. Cleaning the sow, removes parasite eggs and minimizes exposure of newborn pigs to microorganisms during nursing. c. Equip the farrowing house with a washing stall for cleaning the sows before they enter. 5. Dead animals and afterbirths. a. Carcasses and afterbirths are a source of disease. B. Disposal options. 1. Have them removed inundately by a licensed rendering company. 2. Burn them completely. 3. Bury them at least 3 feet underground and away from any source of drinking water. Cover them with quicklime before adding fill dirt. C. Prevent pets and predators from carrying dead animals between farms. Thanks for watching, share, comment and subscribe for more update.